Hello everyone and welcome back to my European Space Agency RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. As you can see I'm hard at work trying to adapt my Mars lander for the fact that I can't use the Mark 1 lander can because it says part is not ready for re-entry even though there's no actual reason given for that. That's not because of temperature, it's not because of actual pressure, because we're talking about Mars here for heaven's sakes. Uh, but yeah. So it is a peculiar thing and I, I'm very tempted to just remove that condition from the Mark 1 lander can or just create a duplicate part that doesn't have that. Uh, I don't see why I can't but uh, I might still consider that but for now I was planning to play along and uh, use the Gemini cabin because well that can survive re-entry right? Surely. Uh, but, but there is a little quirk on the Gemini cabin and where is it? Oh yeah, the, the control unit uh, it says only works near Earth. And, you know, okay, uh, we've got the, uh, you know, deep space controller up here, so that's not a problem, I think, unless it creates a problem, right? The, we, we no longer know about the problems. The curious thing is, I went, okay, well, I don't want to mess with that. We've got this Gemini L cabin, you see, and it says this one is capable of re-entry from translunar trajectory. Well, okay, I mean, similar to the system using Apollo and everything. So, okay, well, surely that would work away from Earth, right? No. So, hmm, that's a curiosity. Well, I guess I won't be using the Gemini L cabin because it actually doesn't work away from Earth either, so I might as well just stick to this one, which is marginally cheaper. Now, the water amount and oxygen amount in the cabin presume the existence of the service module for Gemini, so we have to fix that. But given the, frankly, unfair sort of limitations they've placed on us, I think it uh, I'm going to test this in sandbox. I mean, we already tried a uh, lander test. It didn't work because of fiat. Basically, they declared that something didn't work even though there was no particular reason for it. Uh, so, that, but I'm in the career mode right now, but I think I'm going to pull it into sandbox to test it. But let me, this is just, I'm just going to zoom it over to Mars and see. I'm not going to use the simulation mode because whatever. <laughs> um, uh, anyway. Okay, so we are now in sandbox, but I just realized that we weren't using the retractable solar panels, which we want to do. So let's do that. Um, I'll have to figure that out in the career mode, but for now, let me just slap these on. Guess I opened the wrong craft file, so these should be extendable and tracking, though right now they will be hitting that. Well, they could have some clearance. Let me just scooch them up just a little bit. Okay, so now let's take it out to... I'm just gonna set it directly into orbit around Mars. And those will be the parameters. So let's just do that quickly. Okay, so extending the solar panels. Well, they would hit the air brakes anyway, but let's just not deal with that right now. So it's turning towards the sun and our orbit looks like this. This would be an absurdly soft entry into Mars, uh, the Mars system, or Mars SOI. So we would be normally expecting to come in much faster than this, but let's just work with this first. The periapsis is 259, so actually before we turn to the sun, let's get some radial in. Okay, well, we can't do it precisely right now, because slow as we're going, it's sort of touchier than normal. I think I want about 56 kilometers. Uh, let's try 50, whatever that is. All right. Well, looks like nighttime side. Um, also, I forgot to bring out the antenna, but I think it'll still pop out. This sandbox, it's okay. <laughs> I probably didn't turn on require connection for control or something like that. Okay, 54 kilometers it will be. 
I'm gonna leave the antenna out to see what happens. And we are trying to capture into orbit. Not come straight down just yet. Okay, we are in the atmosphere. Let's see what happens. What if the Gemini pod explodes? Then I probably have to just make my own, right? Well, um, something's overheating. Uh, I think it's docking port. Wait, what? Okay, I think we lost the docking port and now we're just sandwiched up against the heat shield. Hmm. Does the docking port have some can't work in re-entry thing? Well, this is an interesting test. I don't mind this test right now. Can we just not have a heat shield? <laughs> it doesn't seem to be doing much anyway. Uh, okay, um, why don't we just go retrograde since you want to be that way? You know, this way around, the docking port probably would be okay. Oh, the antenna got broken? Ah, oh, the antenna. Okay, so we will have to tech the antenna in uh, for this. I mean, maybe it wouldn't have gotten broken with the heat shield there, but I'd rather tuck the antenna in and rely on some satellites around Mars to relay us uh, using the probe core zone communication uh, than to try to have a heat shield that won't protect our docking port, so. It seems like we've captured. So the altitude was fine. But would it be fine if we were talking about not having heat shield? Right now the engines are getting overheated. Would they be able to take the initial amount of heat if the heat shield had not been there? Well, I think we should test that. So we're going to do so. Let's just see where this ends up. But it's not a perfect test right now anyway, because we started off with a heat shield, but ended up without one. So we, we want that to be consistent somehow. Well, for the docking port, maybe we need a, a decoupler between it and the heat shield or something like that. Well, I would consider this a serviceable capture. And we're not going to get much more out of the atmosphere at this site. So reverting to the VAB and let's just not have a heat shield <laughs> let's see what happens and then we'll try with a heat shield but with something between it and the docking port but if we don't need a heat shield that's fine by me now mind you we haven't actually unlocked the Gemini pod so we will have to do that okay well it's using a lot of authority to keep itself pointed in this direction. About half of the pitch right now. I don't want it wasting RCS and that. What happens if I take it off, actually? The docking port may or may not explode. It sort of leans to one side. There is a slight imbalance. There's the antenna on one side and only the ladder on the other side, but I don't think it should be too bad. Now, this is an entry that was slow, right? Because we weren't coming in from Earth. It was just, you know, a barely sort of hyperbolic situation. So I don't know how relevant it is. But so far, no heat shield necessary. And we have captured. We've captured. But there is that engine overheating. Every time we, we lean that way, in particular. So maybe we should like barbecue roll. But barbecue rolling doesn't help when there's a systematic imbalance in mass, right? Uh, or at least it doesn't help as much. It'll still lean the same way. I 
Anyway, we are going up. Anyway, this is an interesting enough situation that I'm going to come around again and I don't really want to bring it down to the surface at night time, but uh, if it comes to that, that'll still allow us to test the system somewhat. And I was robbed of a proper test in the career mode save, so I'm going to try it here with this version. I could probably have set the argument of periapsis different so that it would be in daylight. Maybe I should still do that. <laughs> uh, hmm. Guess we can funge that. Oh, could they just pick up the orbit as it is right now so I can modify it? Okay, well, uh, I just reset the orbit so our periapsis is in daylight just for aesthetic sake. And uh, that I didn't override the safety check. I'll just pull the periapsis down back to 50-ish. Okay, let's head in like that. A close approximation to what we had before except with the periapsis in daylight. Alright, I'm gonna try fizz warping in the atmosphere here. I think this one won't bring us down. Don't know if I should let it tilt. I guess I'll let it tilt just to see. We know one engine was at risk because of the tilting last time. That one. Uh, okay, now this tank is getting hot. Well, okay, it was. Uh, that's worth noting. Or it could be the engine. Um, yeah, I think it must be the engine because otherwise it'd be closer to the center of the tank. I think it's just that engine that extends all the way up there. And that one. Oh, I need to do something about this. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna... So I had installed the visual mods and such from CCAN, but I think I'm just gonna copy over what I have in other installs where this doesn't happen. Uh, so you'll have to forgive me. I'm not going to try and fiddle around with the numbers to solve it. I'm just going to copy a different result, a different uh, source. All right, I, I'm just going to try and bring it down. Well, maybe we should get into a low orbit first. That didn't bring our orbit down very much at all. Well, I'm going to take it down to 45 kilometer periapsis and see what that does. And we're in the atmosphere. Okay, I'm gonna let it lean. And there's a little bit of overheating again, but hopefully the reduced periapsis won't change anything. It'll still survive. Got some actual effects, finally. Pretty tenuous here. But we're going to be going up. Uh, hopefully the heat accumulation isn't too bad. Dissipate! Dissipate! It didn't dissipate. Okay. I should have just kept the whole thing balanced, oh well. With the RCS, I mean. Well, we'll see how it goes with one engine gone like that. Certainly makes the test more interesting. So, we're lower now. And yeah, I, I definitely want to see if we can come down on the next pass. On the real deal, we should be a little bit more patient. Maybe I'll just put the heat shield on this side. I mean, clearly the docking port didn't have any problems in this case. It's only when it's attached to the heat shield that's a problem. But obviously putting the heat shield on this side precludes the use of these engines until we get rid of it. 
I think it's something we can test, so let's see if we can put the heat shield on the docking port by putting something in between, like a decoupler, and see if it survives. But first I want to try a uh, landing test. It's a landing test with uh, engine gone, so it's probably not going to go very well. But we'll see. Okay, hopefully that'll do the trick. Well, now I'm going to shut down the opposite trend star. We don't have a whole lot of thrust weight ratio like this. Alright, those out arming the parachute. What I really want to see is if the parachutes are in a good place. Everything after parachute deployment is probably go, going to go wrong. Okay, well, will we use the one, uh, lose the one that we turned off? I doubt it. We can't be that lucky. Oh, we are coming down. Okay, almost parachute time. Let's see if the drogue chutes can deploy successfully. We're still pretty fast. I set them for 8 kilometers. And they didn't. Okay, well, we're going to have to beef them up quite a lot. Well, the mains... Well, okay, so this isn't going to work very well. Still making sound somewhere. Well, that's more or less what I was expecting from the actual test instead of the Mark 1 pod randomly exploding. exploding. So uh, we basically got <laughs> what I was supposed to get from that, which is the parachutes are probably not going to do enough the way they are right now. Uh, they are Kevlar, let's just revert to vehicle assembly here, but uh, I think we're still going too fast at that point, and so we'll need to mitigate that a bit. Uh, so just reviewing the parachutes, maybe if I when I took them off and put them on or something like that, something changed, but it's Kevlar. Um, it's set to uh, 24 tons of mass, because that's what we have here, and... Yeah, but that didn't go so well, did it? Uh, if we set it to a lower speed that we want and a higher mass, that'll make them heavier. Hopefully. Well, let me just try and beef them up even more. We need especially the drogue shoots to be functional. Let's say double our current mass. Still says successful all right okay well if it's double our current mass will it work out that cuts into our delta v so but i was wanting to get the answer to the question what happens if we put the heat shield on but have a doc you know, have a decoupler there okay but then we have to address the imbalance caused by the antenna 0.004 tons. I mean, that does really seem like uh, the the ladder should have handled that. Maybe the ladder is too heavy. 0.02 tons. Okay, that's too heavy. Oh, maybe it's even this 0.035 tons. So it was this one. O2 pressure control is only 10 kilograms. That'll probably work out best. The 50 kilograms for the N2 pressure control. Well, this ladder though is 35 kilograms that's so that's 55 kilograms for those two combined so maybe we should put 50 kilograms on this side cutting into our delta v again though uh this stage is no longer all that great <laughs> this one right here well i can just tilt these and pretend they're not clipping horribly uh, the thrust weight ratio still gives me the chills 
can't do a whole lot. We can't add too much fuel. Probably gotta put the N2 pressure control down here instead. We'll dump it along with the descent portion. Uh, is, is it really useful? Maybe I should just put some additional tank on this side. Because uh, we gotta carry nitrogen that's just gonna leak out, right? Nitrogen leaks. So there's not a whole lot of point to this. Maybe a small additional tank will do the trick. Well, I don't have the reference for... Yeah, let's do that in career mode. I don't have the reference for what whether we've got it tooled or not. So, okay. This is uh, just a test of whether the heat shield will not blow up the docking port if we've got it like this with the decoupler in. Okay, well with the heat shield here, I'm going to see if the Communitron break. It probably will break. Uh, just out of curiosity, we're uh, on this sort of pass around Mars again. And we'll bring the periapsis down into the atmosphere. Okay, well, this capture has been placid so far. Well, like, until the antenna broke. But we sort of expected that anyway. Antenna broke. And we're approaching periapsis. And the docking port has already passed the point where it exploded before, so... I presume it's okay this time. The drag of the heat shield has brought us a little bit lower than the equivalent altitude last time. Also as expected. Now we only intend to use the heat shield for the first pass, but maybe a second pass with it would be a good idea. Let me just set it to 54 kilometers again. Or, actually, we'll just take this. I don't want to hassle with it. Uh, so we're going to go back in again and see what altitude it brings us to. And hopefully shedding the heat shield is not going to be a problem. I would like to stay in orbit. Uh, and then shed the heat shield once we go around again. Okay, it looks like we are going to safely remain in orbit. So, all according to plan. So we'll eject off the heat shield at apoapsis and then come back in. And then land, of course. We have the beefed up drogue chutes. We'll see if they work. And that will conclude it for this impromptu sandbox testing. Mainly so I don't have to pull my hair out doing enough. Because otherwise what we would have to do is do a whole uh, sequence of Mars testing with this new pod, right? Uh, so spend extra time on that, an extra Mars window or two. I'm done with that. <laughs> we're we're gonna we're gonna at least nail a few things down. There's still uncertainties here. There's still plenty of uncertainties as far as this is gonna be concerned. But at least we can get rid of some of the things that should have been tested with the pods that we already sent. Okay. Well. I think that's the decoupler. Decouple. Okay, heat shield should be off. Okay, here we go. Okay, hopefully this is all gentler than it was the previous time we got to this point. Sort of skimming along for an extended period in the atmosphere here. Certainly no overheating so far. Okay, more RCS usage now. Let me just let that go. Oh, okay, maybe not. <laughs> That's tilting a little bit too far. I don't want to go nose first. We shouldn't go nose first, but, but uh, the air brakes sometimes bring the center of lift a little bit too far to one side. I don't know if the air brakes are really useful. Uh, let's bring them in. I'm very suspicious of them right now. I think they're causing the problem. 
I don't know if scaling up the parachutes will do the trick here. Uh, they just might have a maximum velocity or maximum dynamic pressure. Maybe if I extend the landing gear. And then put out the air brakes. Extending the landing gear and putting out the air brakes seems to be a good mix. <laughs> uh, but, but, how's this gonna do? I'm gonna ignore it quickly. No, they broke. And they broke too. Alright. The whole parachute thing is not working out for me very well. Maybe we need... F but, but we're just going too fast. And that was from a fairly low orbit already. Now frankly, this is not how I would design a lander from scratch, it's just by the requirements of RP-1 that we're going here. Uh, this is nothing like, say, my Mini-Q lander or any lander that I've tried to create for landing on Mars. <laughs> and so far I see why. Uh, well, except for in RP-1 with the Gemini lander, I had a little Gemini lander. We had similar problems with that, but actually the... the um, Mass of this is actually a little bit better off than that one, I think. Uh, well, it seems like I have some thinking to do. Uh, while we have had some conclusions here, I don't think that this lander is going to be successful. So our sandbox testing has given us some results, but I think as far as what lander I'm going to be using in the career, career save, uh, that is more up for grabs. So I'm going to continue thinking about that. So with that, with this sandbox testing episode, which is what it ended up being, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.